Hey everybody, Zach here at eTrailer.com and today we're going to be taking a look at the Trunks Rooftop Cargo Carrier. Now this is a 9 cubic foot roof box. It's going to allow you to carry some stuff on top of your roof, protect it up there. My family uses a box all the time for our trips with the kids pack and plays in the strollers. Those take up so much space in the trunk or the back. And then with the car seats, they take up so much space too. So this allows us to throw some extra gear and some bags up there so we have a little bit more room to stretch out. If you've done any research on putting a box on top of your vehicle, you probably understand that it's pretty expensive cost for you. So not only do we have to pay for the box, but we also need to buy a set of crossbars like we have here. If you already have them, that's even better, but they can get up there in price. Now this one is gonna be a much more economical approach to it, but just because you're not gonna spend as much doesn't mean you're not gonna get some of those key features of the whole reason of getting one and that's keeping your stuff protected. What makes this one a little bit more of an entry-level box is kind of the, the functions of how things latch and how you get it open. Some of those more ease of use type stuff is what this will lack compared to some of those other pricier options. Now we'll just start with how this opens up. Some of the other options out there have just like a one key, one button system and it unlatches everything. So this one takes a few extra steps. We have these little clips right here that will take off. Those are pretty easy to use, but it's just one extra thing. So we'll pop that up, we'll slide it down, and then we have the same thing in the back. We'll take those off and unlatch those, and then we can unlock this. So having this locked up is another benefit of the boxes. So. You may also see a lot of roof bags going down the highway, and those are a really good option too if you're not looking to spend a lot of money. Some of those bags are pretty expensive though, so for what they are, but that still gives you an option to carry stuff on your roof, but it's not secured. Some of them are water resistant. This is gonna be a much more, I don't wanna say completely waterproof, but it's gonna do a much better job than those bags, but you get to lock this up. You can feel comfortable about leaving your stuff in there, those bags can easily be unzipped and have stuff taken out. But right there you can see how this unlatches. It's just a little loose. Some of the other boxes, they're gonna have kind of a flimsy feel too, but they just pop up. They have like a little gas strut inside them. So it's easy to open it up. Now with this, I have to support it with either my arm or these included support braces right here. Not a big deal. I mean, it's easy to get those in place, but it's just one extra step. So if you don't mind doing that, it took me 10 seconds to do that. That's a good way to save some money and get something like this. And you can see I've got a decent amount of my family stuff up here. I have a couple of travel carry-on style suitcases up here. I have a small blanket folded up, a little cooler, and my kids' life jackets up here. So. It fits a decent amount of stuff. We're not gonna be able to fit a bunch of things up here. That's when some of those larger ones, like the 16 and 18 cubic foot options that are out there, Trunks makes an 18 cubic foot one. So if you're looking to carry more stuff, that's a really good option. A lot of people like to carry their skis and snowboards up there. You're not gonna be able to fit this in, anything in there. This It's just not long enough to carry those things. So if you're looking for something like that, there are definitely options out there, but this is, gonna do a good job of carrying a small amount of luggage that we can't fit in the trunk or in the back of the car. And when it comes to attaching this to your crossbars, it has these C-clamps that come up underneath the crossbar and then it, you insert it into holes right here and you thread these knobs on with that plate in place. So what makes this a challenge is that it has a fixed set on where that crossbar spread is. So that is 22 inches. Now, if you have raised side rails or factory bars that can move, that's not as big of an issue. But if you have fixed set like I have here today, that's when you have problems because most of the time that 22 inches is a little too narrow for what your vehicle calls for. So you will have to drill some holes in there to allow this to work up to 30 inches on that crossbar spread. We'll show you how we did that later. But that's one of the downsides to this style is you will eventually have to drill some holes if you don't have that style crossbars. Here's a better look at that clamp that goes underneath our crossbars. So this is gonna work with most arrow, square, round, and elliptical style bars. 
So it's gonna work with a lot of factory bars. It does have a max width of three and three quarters of an inch and a height of an inch and three sixteenths. So you're probably gonna have some issues if you're trying to put it on larger style, like heavy duty bars or some of the factory bars on like the Xterra or the Hummer. So you can kind of see the theme. Everything just takes a few extra steps. We're not talking like you're gonna be out here for hours trying to get this installed and open it up. It's just a little bit more time than some of the higher end boxes. Another thing to keep in mind is this only opens up from the passenger side. Now you may think that that's a big deal. If one opens up from the driver's side and the passenger side versus this one that just has one, mine opens up from both ways. I only open it up from the passenger side. Very seldomly do I really have to get in on the driver's side. I usually push mine over to the side of the vehicle anyway. If I have to park on the street, I don't wanna be on the driver's side trying to dig around for stuff. I would rather just open it up over here and get out whatever I need. If you have a taller vehicle, you know, you're probably gonna wanna pull it over on one side anyway. So I think that that's not the end of the world that it just has this one side opening. Another thing I wanna point out is the hinge system here. When I was putting this together and even using it, it's, it's not my favorite thing in the world. I can deal with all the other extra steps, but I think this is a little weird. You have to kind of finesse it to get in place. If I take these support arms down and I try to close this up or open it up, you can see how if you lift it up wrong, that kind of moves around. If that pops out of place, this clip does a decent enough job of holding it down, but it's just one of those things where you kind of got to finesse it down to make sure that you get a good latch. But on the outside there, we're still going to get a clamp. So this is definitely holding it in place so we get a nice secure fit all the way around the box. You can see here, we have to kind of get it to sit out a little bit more. Not the end of the world. We'll get that put in place and we'll get this locked up and latched down. So if you don't have that sitting exactly right, you can see the lock kind of gets goofy. You can see how that lock is right there. You need it to line up just right to get in there. So make sure that's held in place. We'll get that put down. There it goes. And now we have those locks in place. So we still need to put our lashes down. I wasn't a huge fan of these at first, but I think they do a really good job of keeping it down the more I use it. You can hear this. It's really secure there. This isn't going to have any issues with coming undone. But just in case, it comes with these clips. Now, I don't know, it's not my favorite thing, how this latches down. I feel like it could be a little bit better. But, here we go. It's a little tight in there. But once we get those in place, that's not gonna come done. But I think that holds in place even without them, but you should still put those in place. Now with all of those held in place, you can see this isn't coming up. It's got a little bit of play right there in the corners, but this has a nice lip that comes over that, that I think that is gonna do a good job of keeping water from getting underneath there. Some of the higher end ones have a little bit seal that goes around the whole thing, but even without having that, I think that it's gonna do a good job of keeping water and moisture out of there. The one thing I would maybe be concerned is if you do have to drill holes in the bottom, um, of water coming up eventually, but I think for the most part, we're gonna be okay. When it comes to the interior dimensions or the usable space, it's going to measure at 44 inches by 26 and a half by 17. So definitely keep those in mind. Something that I have an issue with the boxes is trying to put something large like a stroller in there and it just doesn't allow me to close it down just because I can get it to sit down. You got to keep that in mind when you're folding this back down, but that's still a decent amount of space to get several size suitcases in there. Now, when it comes to the overall dimensions to this, it's going to measure at 46 and 5 eighths inches long by 27 and 3 eighths inches wide by 17 and 5 sixteenths inches tall. Now that 17 and 5 16 is from the top of our crossbars to the top of our box. So that's something to keep in mind whenever you have any low clearance issues like a garage. I don't think we'd have any problems with my Jetta here today, but if I put this on my wife's Grand Cherokee, I probably wouldn't be able to pull into my garage. So that's something to be mindful of. You don't wanna drive into any of those situations where you're tearing up your box or your vehicle for that. 
It's constructed of an HDPE thermoplastic design. Uh, so it's going to be pretty durable. It's you know got a little bit of flux there, but most boxes do. Maybe not as much as this, but I feel pretty confident that this is going to hold up. And the design has got a nice arrow shape to it. So it's going to cut down on wind noise and drag. Now, you're putting a big box on top of your car. There's going to be some noise. You're going to get a little bit of drag. Probably going to hurt fuel economy. Most do. There, there's not many boxes that aren't going to be some sort of noise or cut down on your fuel economy, but they're going to do a good job of trying to help fight and keep that to a minimum. And then when it comes to the times you're not using this, because you're not going to want to keep it on your car all the time. Some people like to keep them up there, but if you're not, it comes off pretty easily. We can pop all those latches around it. That one was already done. And then we can just get the inside latch undone. And then what's nice about it is it can just store inside itself. So if you're really tight on space, this is a way to do it. I probably would leave it together but this isn't gonna have as big of a footprint. My big 16 cubic foot one, I have to have it on t the very top shelf in my garage. It takes up so much space. It's kind of a pain to get it down by myself, but this is an easier way to store it so you're not taking up as much space in your garage. And when it comes to how much you can put in here, that nine cubic feet isn't that much. So you're not gonna be able to put a lot of stuff in here, but it does have a capacity of 110 pounds. Um, you definitely want to keep in mind that you want to stay within that, but also the weight rating of your bars. If your bars can't hold that much weight, you need to go off of whatever's lower. And definitely keep in mind the weight capacity of your roof. Um, so whatever's the lowest between those three, go off of that. This doesn't weigh that much. That's something I do like about the nine cubic foot style is I can put this up here by myself. So let's just show you how we got this put on today. When it comes to the crossbar systems that are fixed, like we have here on this Jetta today, the 22 inches sometimes creates an issue. So this one here today is 28 inches center to center. That's well past the 22 inch center mark that we have on the box pre-installed. So what you can do is you can get it lined up with your back set and then measure to the center and create some new holes, drilling them. But that would require taking it off right away and trying to measure everything out. What we've done is I've already mocked up with a paint pen. I just dabbed a little bit of paint on here and I got the back end lined up and then I brought it around here and just lined it up and pressed up on the bottom and that marked the bottom of my box so I can drill that out. So I did that on both sides so we can take this off and get those holes drilled out. I went ahead and I took the box off the roof and I took it apart so I just have the bottom laying upside down on this piece of cardboard. And I'm gonna take a 5 16 drill bit to drill out my holes. Now, you can see the difference here between the 22 inch center and the 28 inch center that those crossbars have that are on the car. So what we can do here is we can just drill straight down. We don't have to go super fast. We'll be able to get through this pretty easily. Sure that's clean and then we can just do that same process for the remaining holes and you don't need to apply a lot of pressure a little bit's okay you need it to get through but we don't need to really press down hard because there's not a ton of support on the back side there to keep this from bending in you can see i already have a little bit of an indention there So I put this back up on my roof and I have three of the four brackets in place. So we'll take that bracket that we use to mark our holes on the front side and I'll slide it underneath my crossbars and I will slide it up into place. And then on the inside, I'll take this metal bracket and I will get it lined up on our holes there. And I'll take these knobs and I'll start threading those into place and then we can just evenly tighten this down. We don't want it to pull up on one side or the other. 
And I don't have my other three brackets tightened all the way down because I did want a little bit of adjustment. So I have this sitting centered. And also, this isn't the largest box in the world. So, and with it only opening up on one side, we want to bring it a little bit closer to the side of the vehicle. Now, my car is not very big, so I'm not going to have a big issue. And this style foot pack here makes this sit in a little bit further, but I kind of like the placement of it. But if you have a bigger vehicle, it's best to have it off-centered and closer to the passenger side since it opens up on this side. But we'll just continue to tighten those knobs evenly all the way around. We'll make sure we have a secure fit. Now to cover up those holes, this maybe isn't the best idea. If you could work out something with some sealant, but temporarily I'm going to just put some electrical tape over that. That way we can use this box with another vehicle. I don't have to completely seal it up, but we'll put that in place. And then we're ready to get this loaded up and latched down. So I've got everything secured up. I'm gonna take this home for the evening. I'm expecting a little bit of rain on my commute home and then back to work in the morning. So we'll check it out, see how well it does of keeping water out, make sure it keeps my stuff dry and we'll, we'll let you know how it works out. So I brought it back in today. I put probably 100 miles on it and maybe half of those were in the rain. I drove through a couple decent rainstorms. Let's open it up and let's check it out. When I got home last night, I checked it out and it was there's no water in there. I was uh, pretty impressed with it. So we'll get this unlocked. Get our support arms in place. You can see I've got some of my kids' life jackets in there and a couple of those suitcases still. And those are all still dry. I don't have, I have a little bit of water. It looks like it dripped down from when I opened this up, but if you look in there, we could take everything out. There is hardly anything in there. Actually there's, yeah, it's just a couple drops from where I've opened the lid when it was raining. You can see here where I put that tape on there with the installation. I didn't have any water come up through that. Even driving at highway speeds, we didn't have any issues of wind blowing anything underneath there. So I'm actually pretty impressed with the way it held up in those rainstorms. Now, when it comes to my concerns outside of keeping my stuff protected and dry, the other ones were if this is going to affect my fuel economy and how noisy is this going to be? And I had this at highway speed for most of my commute. I didn't really notice it being any louder than any of the other boxes I've ever tested out. I had my radio at normal volume. It didn't have any effect on me needing to turn that up to drown it out. Um, now, when it comes to fuel economy, it made me knock me down one to two miles per gallon, but I didn't notice it. I kind of keep a decent look at how I'm doing throughout the week, and it's kind of right in line with where it normally is. That may change just depending on your driving conditions, but I did have some wind catch it a few times, so I definitely felt that, but it wasn't anything that made me feel like I lost control. So overall, I was pretty surprised with how well this worked. If you can get past the you know, the features of taking a little bit extra time to get this unlatched and only being able to open it up on one side. There's definitely some downsides to that. The other boxes are a little bit easier to use. Um, and I think they're going to save you some time when it comes to mounting it and getting all your gear out. But if you're looking for something that is going to be effective, it's going to keep your stuff dry. It's not going to be that noisy. I was pretty surprised with how this worked out. So I think if you're looking for something that's going to be able to free up some space in your trunk or in the back of the SUV, this is going to be a really good option for you and your family. But that's going to do it for our look at the trunk's cargo box.